football clubs, since the dawn of times, always had many things to worry about. Winning competitions, signing great players, scouting great youngsters, keeping their finances stable. But would you be surprised to learn that over the last decade, a football club's biggest worry was none of the things we just listed, but it was this nerdy looking guy. This is Rui Pinto, a whistleblower, which by definition means a person who informs on a person or organization regarded as engaging in an unlawful or immoral activity. But he wasn't just a simple whistleblower. Rui Pinto was the one who started the most extensive league in the history of not only football, but all sports. We are talking about 3.4 terabytes of information and more than 70 million documents which were all held in a laptop owned by Pinto. Do you know how much that is? I don't know about you, but I've never heard about him years ago when he was in the peak of his career. Probably the media didn't give him much coverage. Only got to know about his importance and his story just some weeks ago, and after that I started digging more and more to find out about what he was doing before getting arrested. Exactly, Rui Pinto was arrested in Hungary in January 2019 under the order of Portuguese authorities. But what happened before that led to him being arrested? In order to find out, let's go back to his childhood. Rui Pinto was born in October of 1988 in Gaia, a city in Portugal. And just like almost all European kids, he had one passion, football. Ever since he was a kid, he fell in love with the beautiful game. He was a fan of Porto. He would turn on the TV and watch all games. He was much more than a simple fan. He was obsessed with football. Pinto later revealed that he had a notebook where he was taking notes on the starting lineups of both teams he was watching, and then he would also draw the team's jerseys with the right colors as well. Growing up, he found out about a new passion to bring together with football, computers. He was self-taught. He would skip classes to learn more about computers and technology. His high school geography teacher stated that he had all potential to be the smartest kid between all his classmates, but they just could be bothered in studying more. Before combining his computer skills with football, he used them at his own advantage in 2013. Pinto found a way to access to a server that stored all emails of Cayman Island banks. Among those emails, he could find the username and passwords of the admin accounts of the Caledonian Bank. He then ordered first a transfer of 35,000 euros and then another one of 231,000 euros to a Deutsche Bank account located in Lisbon. When the Caledonian Bank noticed something was wrong, they reported it to the authorities, but the entire situation never had a high priority for them. He reached an out-of-court settlement with the Caledonian Bank in 2014 and has since refused to comment further on the incident. Apparently, the agreement was that Rui Pinto would return half of the 35,000 euros he received. He already returned the 231,000 euros in exchange of the Caledonian Bank not revealing his identity. Why did we speak about this if it doesn't involve football? You'll find out why it's such an important part in a few minutes. After this, Pinto went unnoticed for some years, but nobody knew he was changing the football world behind the scenes. Rui Pinto moved to Budapest in 2015, and while being there, he was making money working for his father's business. His interest for football and computers were now being combined thanks to a new passion, offshore financial flows resulting in tax evasion in football. A topic that we discuss in a deeper way in a video we already made, you can watch it by pressing the top right pop-up. In the summer of 2015, Pinto gained access to thousands of internal emails from Doyen Sports Investments, a private equity fund that financed the contracts of buying and selling players by football clubs. Then in September of 2015, Rui Pinto created football leagues. We'll talk about this in a few. For now, let's understand more about the situation with Doyen Sports. In October, under the fake identity of Artin Lubasov, Pinto mailed Nilio Lucas, who was the founder of Doyen Sports, and he said he was willing to keep the documents he found private in exchange of a donation between 500,000 and 1 million euros. Nilio Lucas then took part in an undercover operation to find out who Artem Lubasov is and it will be concluded in 2019. For now, let's see what happened between 2015 and 2019. So as we said before, Rui Pinto created Football Leaks in September of 2015. But what is Football Leaks? Well, Football Leaks is a website and its intention was to reveal the dark side of the football industry. An industry that became sad and dishonest and that Pinto didn't like anymore. As soon as the website is open, the following text can be read. Welcome to Football Leaks. This project aims to show the hidden side of football. Unfortunately, the sport we love so much is rotten and it is time to say enough. Rui Pinto wanted to expose everything. Pinto started a revolution. His first targets were the clubs that were involving third-party ownership and contracts of coaches and managers. Among those, there was FC Twente, a club that was cooperating with Doyen Sports. Twente was given a three years ban from European competition and a $300,000 fine. This led to a fall of a club that was doing great at the time. 
In fact, Twente had just won the Eredivisie a few years before, and now, after the football league's revelations, they were totally ruined and ended up being relegated two years later. Pinto then targeted players and agents, leaking information about super agent George Mendez and his client's offshore network of shell companies to avoid taxes. The players involved were many, and they were also very important ones. Ronaldo, Di Maria, and Focal are just some of them. Mourinho, even though he's a coach, was involved too. Again, we had a deep dive on this topic in our previous video. Do you think this is all Pinto has done? Not at all. This was just the start. While everyone was trying to understand who was behind football leaks, as people suggested it could be Russian hackers or lawyers that stopped working in football. Pinto moved to Budapest and here he figured out he needed someone to help him in promoting his leaks to a large audience. Therefore, he ended up getting in touch with Raphael Buschmann, a journalist for German newspaper Der Spiegel, and he provided him four terabytes of information. He was working with them under the pseudonym of John. Hi, uh, this is Rui Pinto. I am John, the whistleblower from Football Leaks. Der Spiegel started partnering with other journals from all over the world, and together they created a network called the European Investigative Collaborations to analyze everything that Pinto gave them. The results of those investigations were astonishing. Tons of revelations were made by the European Investigative Collaborations. Here are some. Ramos tested positive for a substance banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency right after the Champions League final against Juventus. Later on, Real Madrid's doctors took the blame for this and said it was all a mistake. Football leaks also put PSG at the center of the storm after revealing that its scouts were illegally racially profiling young players, which means that the scouts were recruiting players based on their ethnicity and not their skill level. And also because they were breaking several financial fair play rules together with Manchester City, who were then banned for two years from European competitions and were given a $50 million fine. The ban was then overturned. Through the leaks, it was revealed that Manchester City were hiding the financing coming from Sheikh Mansour through inflating sponsorships. Pinto also leaked multiple negative things that we can't really list or else the video would be too long about Benfica, the all-time rivals of his boyhood club Porto, about which he also revealed stuff. Another important leak was the one that revealed that Cristiano Ronaldo allegedly paid a woman $375,000 to keep her sons on a potential raping scandal. Der Spiegel tracked down the woman who was found out to be Catherine Mayerga. I guess you probably remember her. Everything was going fine for Pinto, who was putting lights on several negative aspects of the football industry. All of this until 2019. Remember what we said before? In 2019, Rui Pinto was finally conned. Back in 2015, Nelio Lucas and his lawyer, the Doyen Sports CEO, organized a meeting with Rui Pinto's lawyer, Anibal Pinto. Nelio Lucas was wearing a listening device. Although Anibal Pinto didn't give his client's name away, reliable sources believed that he said that his client's skills were so good that he could get money from Cayman Islands bank accounts. This connects to what we said at the very beginning of the video. Pinto getting money from the Caledonian bank. And with the dots connecting, police finally identified Artem Lubazov or John as Rui Pinto and ensured an arrest warrant in 2019. Why four years later? <laughs> we don't have a clue. Rui Pinto was arrested in Budapest and then brought back to Portugal. He was given a four-year suspended sentence for 90 charges, of which 77 were removed thanks to Portuguese law for younger people. The opinions on him are mixed. There's people who believe he was a criminal and people who believed he was important for freedom speech in football, such as the Borussia Dortmund fans who held banners in his support. We want to know what your take is on Rui Pinto and football leaks, and also don't forget to watch the video we made about the ways footballers evade taxes.